In today's video, we are going to go over how to add an AirTag to your DJI Osmo Pocket 3 using the DIY magnetic AirTag case that I sell on my website. Now you can skip all of this and buy one that's already pre-made, but if you are a DIYer like myself, you can do this yourself. All you'll need is an Apple AirTag and the tools listed in the description below. The kit will include the AirTag case 3D print, positive ground and the jumper wire, and heat tape used to secure the wires onto the battery. Step one is to decase your AirTag. You'll use flush cutters and a small screwdriver. Remove the plastic if this is a new AirTag. and remove the battery cover. Set the battery aside, we'll use that for later. This metal piece can just get thrown away. Now this piece right here, when you hold this up with the battery terminals on the top, in the two o'clock position, you'll use a screwdriver to push through the two pieces and pry it open. Don't use too much force. You don't wanna damage what's inside. Just slowly press into the plastic. And once you get underneath of it, try prying the piece apart. I like to go all the way around. There's three tabs inside of it that need to break. And that's what we're doing. Once you've pried it enough, you can use your fingers to pry the rest of it off. Sometimes the speaker magnet does get stuck onto this piece here. All you have to do is bend it and it will come off. Set it aside as we'll put it back later. Now we'll have to remove the speaker coil from the adhesive from the case before you go any further. Now this is really important not to damage it so you can re retain that speaker feature. Use a heat gun to heat up the other side of the air tag and try to just get in the center. Once you did it enough, you'll start seeing it start to bubble. That's when you know you've probably done it enough. Use your pry tool or screwdriver to gently get underneath the coil. Slowly pry it apart. I like to just get underneath a small piece of it and then use a screwdriver to slide across the rest of it. Again, be very careful not to damage the coil. Take your time, you don't want to damage anything. All right, so now, as you can see, it is now free. Next step is to cut on these three sections here. You can see them right there, there, and there. You use your flesh cutters to basically just cut that section. Only cut the white plastic casing and not the actual board. Once you cut those three sections, cut in between each of the sections. This will help you remove the board from the plastic casing. And once you've done so, you can start slowly bending it 
on each end and the board should come loose. All right, so now once you have the board out of the AirTag casing, the next step is to remove these little glue nubs, I call them. <laughs> uh, they're just glue that was holding it in place. All you have to do is get a light grip on them and twist, and they should just come off completely. nubs, glue nubs. All right, so now that you have the nubs off, the next step is to begin prepping your board for soldering. There's gonna be three pads that we'll have to solder, but before we get to that, we'll have to remove the current terminal connections. There's three pieces that we're gonna slowly pull off of the board. And that's these pieces right here. Use your flush cutters and all we're gonna do is wrap it around the flush cutters and it should just come off. First one we're gonna do is the negative terminal. All you have to do is pry this one up like so. This is the easiest one to get off. Just like that. Next one is the positive. And these ones you just kind of twist it around and it should just come off. Be very careful not to pull it off. You're basically just twisting it off. You don't want to damage the pads underneath Otherwise, it'll make soldering much harder. All right, so once, once you get that off, you'll see these three pads that we're going to add solder to and solder the wires on. The middle pad is the negative and the two on the outside are the positive pads. So go ahead and get all your soldering gear that you have. If you don't have any soldering gear and you still want to do this, use the links in the description below where I list out everything that I use. Your kit will come with the wires that you need. I'm going to start heating up this soldering iron. Also make sure you have a pair of these tweezers or some sort of soldering grips. So now I'm going to strip the ends of the wires so I can tin them. Tin them is basically adding a little bit of solder to the ends of them, which will make the soldering process much easier. This is flux. The flux will be added to the pads. This will make it easier to apply the solder to the pads. Just smear a little bit over the pads. And once that is done, we're going to add a little bit of solder to this.
So this is the process of tinning. All you're doing is adding a little bit of solder to the ends of the wires. If you don't have one already, please get a solder exhaust fan that pulls away the solder smoke from your face. All right, once I'm done tinning the wires, I'm going to add a little bit of solder to the pads. All right, so once I've added the solder, the next step is to begin adding the wires. I'm gonna start with this jumper wire. You do need to put this jumper wire on the left terminal and put it on the right or vice versa, but this does need to be added not sure why, um, but that's just the way this is designed. These tweezers come in really nice for these really small, intricate wires and placement of them. Once that is soldered on, the last wire to add is the negative wire. The negative pad is in the center. I realized this was a little too long, so I'm cutting it a little shorter. All right, so that is soldering the wires on. This is probably the hardest part and most stressful. So once you finish this, all we have to do now is test it and make sure it works. I'm gonna cut these wires down a little bit more because I know it's gonna be shorter than this. So go ahead and cut them a little shorter if they are too long on your end, or you can cut them on, you can cut them off later on when you have them in your case. 
We are getting close now, so let's add this magnet for the speaker coil back in and we'll add a little bit of hot glue to it so it doesn't move. You're only adding a very tiny bit to this piece right here. All right, so now we have this all complete. The next step is adding it to your case. The case will come in two pieces, a front and a back. Before we do that though, let's just go ahead and test it. If you put the positive wire on the positive end of the battery and the negative on the negative part, part of the battery, it should make a chime. And that's how you know it's working. Use the provided heat tape to secure the positive and negative wires onto the battery. The first one we're gonna do is the positive end. This is gonna be the end that's gonna be pressed into the 3D print itself. The negative end will be on the outside. Once we have it secure, we're going to add in the air tag and the battery into the case. You'll see two channels. The left channel will hold the positive wire and the right channel will hold the negative wire. Once you have the two pieces in the 3D print, go ahead and give the battery a good push into the case. It should be a pretty tight fit. Now go ahead and place the negative wire on top of the battery and use that heat tape to secure it. Now this part is optional. Technically you don't have to tape that negative wire on there. I like to do it so it's always on. When you take off the front piece, of the 3D print, it will basically turn off the air tag. But if you use tape to secure it on, it will remain on even if you remove that front piece. Now you should have heard a chime and that's good, but we've already tested this out. The next step is to secure the air tag to the 3D print. We'll do that by adding hot glue to two points in the 3D print. Once you add the glue, you can press in the air tag. All right, and this is how it should look. The last thing to do is bring your phone to the air tag and the setup process should begin. Lastly, all you have to do is line up the rails on the back with the grooves on the front. Once you have it lined up, give it a firm press. And it should lock into place. Now you can finish the setup process and add your DJI Osmo Pocket 3. And you'll never lose it because there's an AirTag inside.